So testosterone promotes sex-seeking behavior. And the real question then is, does sex itself promote testosterone? And the answer is somewhat complicated, but the short version is yes. And as you recall, sex has multiple stages. So there's the physical act of sex, there's the seeking of sex, and then there's orgasm and ejaculation. Now, it's important to distinguish between these because whether or not sex itself increases testosterone depends on whether or not the male ejaculates. And this is very important to understand because on a previous episode, I mentioned how dopamine increases with sexual activity. Remember, dopamine and testosterone tend to increase linearly with one another. But then after ejaculation, there's a release of prolactin and prolactin actually sets the refractory period in males during which he can't have sex again. And the duration of the refractory period will vary tremendously depending on how much and how long that prolactin release occurs. And sex itself also increases testosterone, but it also increases prolactin. So in both men and women, sex increases prolactin post-sex. It's just the way that the system works. It's that testosterone and dopamine increase in the seeking out and the behavior of sex. And then after sex, prolactin levels go up. There's kind of a quiescence. The whole nervous system is promoted towards calm. And this may actually have something to do with pair bonding and the encouragement of individuals to spend more time together to exchange different smells and hormones. Now, men who observe sex will have slight increases in testosterone during the observation. These people actually were, were willing to have blood draws taken while watching. They had increases in testosterone that were very modest of about 10%. Whereas when people participated in sex, they actually did this study where people had blood draws and they had real sex with their partners and they had 70% increases in testosterone. So there are increases in testosterone that are quite significant during the physical act of sex and far less so during observing sex. Now, the question that I often get, in fact, is one of the questions I get most often in the comments on YouTube, I don't know why that is, is whether or not ejaculation adjusts testosterone levels. And it turns out there are two studies that I could find that were quality studies on PubMed that address this, that sex and ejaculation itself does not reduce testosterone levels although it will increase prolactin levels for the reasons I described a moment ago. However, abstinence or sex without ejaculation for a week or more will increase testosterone levels up to 400%. So the answer is actually complicated. It's not straightforward. What it means is that sex itself increases testosterone However, abstinence also increases testosterone even further. So it's a nuanced answer. And I hope this is satisfactory, no pun intended, to those of you that have been asking me, what is the relationship between sex and ejaculation and testosterone and dopamine? It is nuanced. And you have to understand that nuance if you want to understand how certain behaviors impact hormones and how hormones impact those behaviors proper sleep can um, really offset all the reductions in testosterone and estrogen and reductions in fertility that occur if we don't get enough sleep. But seldom is it discussed how sleep actually adjusts things like testosterone and estrogen. And it does it by modifying cortisol. So the molecule cholesterol can be converted into testosterone or estrogen, but there's a competition whereby the cholesterol will turn into cortisol and not testosterone, or it'll turn into cortisol and not estrogen if stress levels are too high. Cortisol is a stress hormone that is released early in the day as we wake up and serves healthy roles in protecting us against infection, reducing inflammation, etc. But you don't want cortisol to be too high, and you certainly don't want it elevated too long throughout the day and night. How light can impact hormones? Because hormones, light and dopamine have a very close-knit relationship, so much so that your light viewing behavior can actually have a direct effect on hormone levels and fertility. It can have a direct effect on hormone levels and libido. It can have a direct effect on hormone levels and your ability to heal quickly. Competition is a powerful influence on the sex steroid hormones and the sex steroid hormones powerfully influence competition. Now, it's well known in humans that both Males and females who have elevated levels of testosterone will engage in more novelty seeking. And I do want to point out that 
even individuals without testes have testosterone and peaks in testosterone have similar effects regardless of whether or not someone has ovaries or testes. Testosterone increases generally lead to more foraging, more novelty seeking, increases in libido and increases in desire to mate. So it is the case that increases in testosterone promote competitive and foraging type behaviors in, in humans and in non-human mammals. But it's also true that competition itself can increase androgens such as testosterone. I wanna repeat that. Competitive environments themselves can increase testosterone. Now, some people have come to the conclusion that if you win, your testosterone goes up, and if you lose, your testosterone goes down. And to some extent, that's true, but that's not a direct effect on the gonads. That's actually mediated by the neuromodulator dopamine. We talked about dopamine in the episode on motivation and drive, and dopamine and testosterone have a remarkable interplay in the body. Dopamine is actually released in the brain in ways that has the pituitary, this gland that sits over the roof of your mouth, release certain hormones that then go on to promote the release of more testosterone. And indeed, winning promotes more dopamine and later more testosterone. However, in the short term, just competing increases testosterone independent of whether or not you win or lose. So the short w uh, w version of this is that competition increases testosterone. So I just wanna emphasize once more, in case I went through it too quickly, that increases in testosterone in females are also going to lead to increase in reproductive behavior or seeking out reproductive behavior. They increase libido. In fact, there's a particular phase of the menstrual cycle where testosterone peaks just before ovulation that on average leads female humans to seek out sex more than they would otherwise during their cycle. And this is all by self-report, but this is also while measuring things like testosterone, estrogen ratios, and so forth. So it's really interesting that a single molecule, regardless of chromosomal or gonadal background, is increasing seeking of mates across individuals, increasing desire to compete or willingness to compete, and lowering the threshold for stress and anxiety. It's important to point out that while increases in testosterone promote seeking of mates and reproduction in both males and females, in females, it's actually increases in estrogen that promote receptivity to mating. So testosterone is driving the seeking of sex and estrogen is promoting the actual act of sex from females, so-called receptivity, consensual receptivity. In males, it's interesting to point out that testosterone is promoting seeking of sex, but it's also estrogen in males that's important for libido. If estrogen levels are brought too low, then men will completely lose their libido. This is often not discussed or overlooked in the discussion about testosterone therapy and performance enhancing drugs. People think that hyperandrogenized individuals, meaning people that have very high levels of androgen, will have very high levels of libido and they will provided estrogen is available in sufficient ratios to match that testosterone. So it's not simply the case that high levels of testosterone produce a lot of sex and mating behavior and low levels of estrogen are good across the board. You actually need both in both males and females. It's just that in females, the testosterone levels are always gonna be lower than the estrogen levels. And in males, the estrogen levels are always gonna be lower than testosterone levels.